So in this video, I'm going to be setting up some new eyelids for one of these heads. Here is the basic eyelid mechanism as a part of the skull. You can see the range of motion here. And when I remove the skull, I've got it set up to be mechanically limited in the range of motion. Here's a view from inside the skull. So this video is sponsored by JLC PCB. More on that later on in the video. Okay, so I have here these two heads, or at least this head here is a previous design I had that has moving eyelids. It's using servos in there to do that. The whole thing is using normal servos. And this here, uh, it's just the skin on the form back there for painting. So this is all done now. Eyebrows, eyelids. So I'm gonna get this on the head in a moment and attach the eyelids. Okay. So I'm using one of these boards here. It's got a built-in ESP chip. It can drive two motors. It's got uh, plugs for the sensors over here, 12 volts of power. This seems to work pretty well. So there's a few sounds. A lot of that has to do with the fact that I've got some cables here, the way that it's interfacing with the, the gear there. It's causing them to pop in and out, so you hear these pops every now and then. The head that I have on here right now is um, a model that I was working on that has eyelids. Uh, they're entirely controlled by servos though, so they do make some sound. So in a minute I'm going to take this head off of there and put a new head on there. That I've got set up for brushless motors on the inside of the head, so I should be able to control the eyelids silently. Got some examples over here. So this is the upper eyelid part. And the idea here is I've got a piece of Velcro that I've super glued to the top and all the loops are sticking up this way. And onto that I've cast a bunch of uh, silicone. I've just tested this one out to see how well this would work. And this is working pretty well. Silicone will peel off of PLA very, very easily, but it's you know, mechanically bound up in all this. So this should allow me to attach it to the eyelid. Over here, a uh, slightly different test. Here's the silicone of the face that I'll be using. You can get an idea of the thickness here between the plastic and the Velcro and the skin itself, which is actually a bit thicker than this. The whole eyelid ends up being Pretty thick, actually. That's, uh, that's a pretty thick sandwich of an eyeball, or an eyelid. So that's a bit of an issue. I think it should look okay, but we'll find out. So anyways, when I take this head off, I'm going to put it down on a new component down here. So I've got these motors in here. A third one in here for rotation, which I don't have hooked up yet. This one, uh, I think, is a 16-volt motor, so i got to set that up a bit differently. Which brings us to the sponsor of this video. So I got this part here printed in uh, nylon from JLC PCB. So this is for a motor here, and then two motors over here. And this should be much more resistant to heat 
So I can run these motors at least a little bit warmer. They have 3D printing, CNC machining, mechatronic parts, and PCB manufacture. Rigid PCBs, flexible PCBs, and PCB assembly. I was very interested in their 3D printing capabilities though. So here I selected this part. And they have a number of different technologies here for this. I was interested in the SLS nylon printing. This will be much better. All right, so that brings us over here to the current version of this robot head. Everything is all set up. I've super glued it onto the lid here. So I should be able to put some silicone on here that will bond on the inside of the mask. And if I do need to remove this so I can take the mask off of the face at a later time, that should be possible to do because this whole mechanism is broken down into several different parts. This part, this part, that part there. So this thing will be permanently attached to the silicone face on the inside, but this is just sort of elastically set into two bearings here. So I can squeeze this and then pop it out if I, if I do need to take the silicone off. The two motors that are going back there to drive the eyelids, I have one of them here. Surprisingly large, but it works very well. I may be able to use a smaller motor, but I'm going to use that one right now because the silicone is actually quite resistant to moving. The eyelid itself is quite thin, but the, the mass of silicone up here is quite thick and it sort of has to stretch the whole thing. I've made some new eyeballs here. I went with a more yellow gold color. So there should be plenty of power to rotate the neck. It's not really that heavy, but once the silicone gets on there and it gets flying around, it's good to have some, some power down here. Running into a small problem here the eyeballs interacting with the eyelid. Should be able to rotate them freely, but they're getting a bit stuck. I think what's happening is around the edges here, it's encountering some friction maybe. So I'm reprinting a version of this eyelid. It's got a little bit more space on the edges. Hopefully that helps. I'll get those plugged in there and see if that fixes it. Okay, I got some new lids on here. Okay, there's the eyelid. Clearance seems good. And if I go to rotate the eye, it's not impeded in any way. I've got the eyelids glued on now. Used this silicone. Seems to have worked pretty well. Just applied it with a brush underneath the eyelid there. Now, I haven't got the sensor for the motor in the mail yet. It's just taking a long time, so I can't really test out the motion with electronic control. But I can sort of jog the motion manually here.
Eyes go open. Eyes go closed. Eyes go open. Eyes go closed. Let's see what we can do over on this side. Oh, hey. Yeah, that works pretty well. Close them a bit. Open them a bit. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. It was a bit tricky. I found that I had to be really careful about applying the silicone in just the right places. Because if it's only in the center, you get these really bizarre deformations it doesn't look natural at all when the eyelid goes open, so it had to, to make sure that the glue was around here, in particular, right in right in here, in here. It wasn't so important on the outside, but it was tricky. Now it's not really like a full range of motion. She can't close her eyes all the way. Uh, I guess you can open them pretty far, though. Now, normally when a person blinks their eyes or, or winks or anything like that, the bottom lid moves as well. It goes up somewhat as the top lid goes down. And r as of right now, I don't have any kind of uh, control down there. So this is kind of a, a bit of a half-assed solution, really. But uh, she can mostly blink. But maybe more importantly, is she can affect different ex expressions by putting her eyes at different levels. Turn it wide open. So this should be really useful. Right now she's looking a little bit sleepy. <laughs> I did the best I could to deal with the the sagging of the skin down here. Unfortunately, there's still quite a bit of a gap. I'd really prefer this to sit a lot more flush in like this. I tried some magnets in the past to do this. I guess I probably used magnets that were not large enough. But, uh, yeah, something... I need to do something in here to get this to really hold in place, hold its position. I think one of the things that's happening is that the face is shaped correctly, but once I get all of the attachment points around the outside and all this other stuff, it ends up stretching the face a bit. So these, all this stuff in here ends up sort of stretched out, and it doesn't really fill the shape properly. Like it's... it's not quite pressed against the inside form in the way that it should be. So I'll have to look into a few ways to fix this for the next head that I make. Alright, so around the back here, I finally got all the motors in there. The, uh, Two for the eyelids, two for the x-axis, and this one here does the y-axis of the eyes. I was waiting about 50 days for this thing to arrive in the mail. This one came just last week. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting on some magnetic sensors so that I can actually turn these on and control them, because right now I can make them spin, but I can't uh, do any kind of position control. I do have one of these sensors lying around right now that I could uh, maybe fart around with. But I gotta wait for the rest of them to arrive before I can hook everything else up.